Paul Stevenson is on the line with us here and we're going to talk about his book, The Tenth, Seven Steps to Taking Back Control of Your Money and Being a Faithful Steward. How are you doing today, Paul? I'm doing great, Toby. How are you? I'm smashing, thank you. So I don't think it's a good idea to spoil the book entirely because then nobody will buy it. But what are the seven steps to taking back control of your money? Sure. So uh, if you get the book, you'll see the seven steps all laid out for you. Basically, it's a way to help you take back control of your money, Mm. giving you a system that is reliable, repeatable and good for you to become a better steward. It's quite important. I mean, I don't know how things are in the US, but in the UK, we've got a big cost of living crisis, partly caused by everything that's happening in Ukraine. So there's never really been a better time to take control of our money. That, that is correct, Toby. And, and yes, you are facing some interesting times right now yeah. on there. And this book could help a several people or a lot of people on getting just over the hump of how they can take control of their money or yeah. just how to look at finances in a different light. And I like how the book is called Seven Steps to Taking Back Control, not just taking control. And that suggests that the control belongs to you. That's correct. We all start off learning through money, through allowances, through our parents or through that first job. And at one time we did have control of our money. We knew how to spend it. We knew how to save for it. But then life happens and you got to spin out of control. And it's that hard part of like, well, I had control once, but how do I get it back? And it is hard money, isn't it? It's a difficult subject. Nobody likes to talk about it. I think in America, you're a little bit more open about it, but you're probably still a touchy subject. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see too many cocktail parties where people talk about their salaries. Yes, unless it's really big and they're showing off. But right, right. A lot of people don't know how to save, don't know how to spend in a way. They maybe spend too much. Mm-hmm. They're not very good at managing money. And it's probably happening to a considerable number of people. They just won't admit it in public. Your exactly point on there, Toby, is a lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck. And they're just hoping for that lottery win or that surprise money that happens to come in to just get them past that hump. And you're right. I think you said it correctly is people don't know how to spend within their limits. They always want to get in that over here in America. We call it keeping up with the Joneses. It's like, oh, you got the iPhone 14. Well, I got the iPhone 16 on there just to show off. Yeah. This thing of living hand to mouth. What do these people do if suddenly they've got to pay an unexpected bill? Where's the money going to come from? Exactly. And in the seven steps, that's actually step seven is how do you plan for those unexpected expenses or even the expected expensive? We're in the latter part of the year, holiday season's coming up and people are starting to look at those paychecks going, how am I going to pay for all those gifts for the holiday season? Where's that money coming from? Yeah, it's a very worrying time. So how do you get that money? The first part is getting back control. And how do you get back control? Well, it's knowing how much am I really making? If I don't know exactly how much I'm making, how do I know if I'm overspending or underspending? So one of the first steps is getting control of how much money am I really breaking in? What is my income? Once you have that figured out and have a pretty good idea of what that is, you can go to the step two and figure out, well, okay, how much am I really spending? Now, of course, of us, we all pay bills. We pay them either weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, however the cadence goes. But you kind of have an idea of it, but not a firm grasp. We all say, well, I spend so much on rent for my flat. I spend so much on food every week. I spend for this membership, that membership. But have you tracked all your money? Like going to the vending machine to pick up that candy bar for that boost at three o'clock in the afternoon or that surprise going out with the gang on a Friday for some drinks. Have you really tracked that to see how much you're spending? Probably Probably not. So getting control of both your income and your outflow is the first couple of steps. Once you get to that point, Toby, then you go to your question about, well, how do I plan for those unexpected expenses? Well, if you know what your income is and your outflow, you can set up that keyword savings. I can start planning for savings. Now here in America, we have a typical example of auto insurance. We know every six months we're going to have an auto insurance bill. So we set a little money aside 
aside every month and says, okay, I need to save this amount of money. That's what you do with all those other unexpected expenses like we talked earlier. Holiday spending is coming up. I know it happens every year. So if I can start putting a little money away for 11 months, I could have some savings on the 12th month for all my holiday spending. Yeah. You mentioned about, you know, the vending machine and stuff. That wouldn't appear to me to be such a big expense. You know, maybe you're only spending in this country one or two pounds a day on that. But I suppose it's one of many things that add up. Oh, you're exactly right, Toby. And you're right. The vending machine over here in America, and I'm sure over there, we have the Starbucks on every corner. Yeah. Paying five bucks a day, maybe 10 bucks a day for two, three coffees. That adds up very quickly. Or, yeah. you know, that lunch every other day. At, well, over here in America, it'd be 12, 15 dollars. I'm guessing over there, it's probably 20 pounds, maybe. 12, 15 dollars, it'll be about 10 pounds. Okay, 10 pounds. We're, we're getting to parity then. Yeah, but we've got rid of her now, so the economy yes. is better. Yes, you know, I, I wouldn't mind having that job for 45 days and then say, oh, <laughs> see ya. Yeah, that's true. And what other quick tips have you got to have better control of one's finances? So, yeah, I think it's not being afraid. Is Like you said earlier, it's that taking back control. It's like you're the master of money. Money is not the master of you. So just having a what I call financial mindset that, yes, I am the master of my money. I am not a slave to it. Yeah. And I think once you have that mindset, that goes a long ways to helping you create all those other milestones and goals for you to achieve financial success. Just a quick word on saving as well. I think it's often said that it needs to become a habit. So what should you do? Maybe just on payday, put away a certain percentage or a certain amount every time. Sure, you can, that's one strategy. Uh, the best way is to do it automatically. Mm. If you don't see it, you can't spend it. Yeah. So one of the tips I like to suggest that people do is just pay yourself first and pay yourself first by having an automatic withdrawal from your paycheck. And like you say, if you're paid weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, set out what you think you can do. I like to set a goal of 10% on there. Now that's a big chunk of money. So I don't start at 10, I start like like maybe $50, maybe $10, depending on what's comfortable for you. And this every paycheck, take that $10, put it over into a savings account on there. If you don't see it, you can't spend it. And then just make a promise to yourself that I will not touch that money for 12 months and hold yourself accountable for that. By the end of 12 months, you have a nice little nest egg. Yeah. And what happens if you've got absolutely zero money in your current account? Is it okay to touch the money if it's absolutely essential and an emergency. And that's exactly the first thing you should do is when you pay yourself first, you go for that emergency savings account. Mm -hmm. And depending on what age you're at, it depends. It can be anywhere from three months of your necessary expenses up to a full year as you get later in life on that. Mm -hmm. But if you have absolutely nothing, make a challenge for yourself. Challenge yourself to say, well, instead of having Starbucks every day, I'm going to have Starbucks every other day. And I'm going to take that five dollars or the 450 over there and put it away and just save it or like we mentioned earlier the vending machine. Do I really need a snack right now? Maybe I could start stave it off and not have it and then take that money, put it away. And and it's a simple thing is like putting it in a piggy bank at home and then yeah. putting the piggy bank somewhere. It doesn't have to be something elaborate. You don't need an app for it. These are simple little tricks that you can do. The only thing is saving money in physical form. Let's say you save up loads of money in a piggy bank. It's going to look a bit suspicious when you go into the bank with all of that, isn't it? It could be. It depends. You know, uh, over here we have regulations about if it's over like 5,000, they kind of look at you straight and say, so what have you been doing yes. for that money? <laughs> I suppose if you've got all the receipts and evidence from it, you'll be fine. Right. Exactly. But but you're right. It's just like, and if for people that do PayPal or Zelle or those, round yourself up. If you're making yeah. a purchase using electronic formats, and it's like 1529. Mm. Round it up to an even 16. Yeah. Yeah. Take that extra 69 cents and put it away somewhere. There is a way to do that with my bank, 
because I know somebody with the same bank who does it, but I don't know how to do it. So I'm going to have a look. Right. And there, there's all sorts of apps. Uh, one app that I've seen does that is I want to say it's called Acorn mm. that does that for you. Have you got any more books coming up after this one at all? Yes, actually. I'm in the middle of writing my next book. It's called The Uniform of the Steward. And it's taking us on a journey of my central character's name, Thomas. And he's taking the journey of what's it mean to be a steward? How do you find your stewardship mission in life? That sounds exciting. And in the meantime, where can we find this book, The Tenth, Seven Steps to Taking Back Control of Your Money and Being a Faithful Steward? Yes, you can find it on Amazon, like everything else. It's the world's shopping center. So feel free to check it out on Amazon or wherever you buy your favorite books. Excellent. Well, many thanks for talking to us today. It's been great to have you on the show. Well, thank you, Toby. Always appreciate the opportunity.